Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of To The Point Podcast. We're always doing well following our first storm of 2021-2022 here as we get into winter, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, But tonight, we are... You know, we're not draped in snow. We're in, we're going to New Mexico in just a little bit to talk about a couple of really interesting episodes of Breaking Baz. We get to the halfway point tonight. We also lose one of the uh, biggest characters of the show. Uh, uh, it's a, not really a spoiler because I think it's, it, it's, you know, you could feel it coming, but we'll talk about that tonight, how that all goes down. And personally, probably my favorite character of the show. But as all, Joining me as always is Seamus Fillmore, which Shay, you're you're dressed to the nines, you know, looking good, looking you're, like you're going to uh, like a big corporate dinner uh, here here on the podcast, and you said you're dressed up for a reason, and I should know it, but unfortunately, I'm not that great a friend, so I don't. So um, please enlighten me in the audience as to why you are dressed to the nines. Uh, I'm going to prom after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, very, very, very special day. Uh, it's not exactly the day, but it's pretty near close. It marks uh, the one year anniversary uh, since we started uh, doing this little shenanigan together. Oh, December fuck. 1st, our first podcast together. Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't. Not. Yeah, I no, it's all good. But I, I looked it up quite, quite a while ago. I said, you know what, it's, it's going to be November. It's going to be beginning of December. So I looked, I was like, oh, perfect. So wow. yeah, dress, that's okay. Dress to the nines because you know what? To me, you know, to me, anyways, anniversaries are a big thing. So I was, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll dress up for it. No, and hey. Uh, I usually look, I usually look like dog shit. You can be honest. So this is a, this is a little bit unusual. But uh, no, I'm, I'm excited to do this. I'm uh, happy that we've lasted this long with mm. uh, our bad mustaches, your big personality, <laughs> and, and uh, a lot of interesting, uh, interesting takes in between. So no, happy yeah. to be, happy to be here with you, buddy. No, uh, well, thank you for remembering that. I, uh, I, as you, I'm not the the greatest with that, as you know. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, Mazel Tov to the both of us. Uh, it, um, I, I got to thank you for hanging in there with me because I, it was a big ask uh, of me to ask you to do this and for you to continue to do this after a year. As you know, I really appreciate it. And uh, no, I'm so happy we get to do this every Tuesday because I enjoy our hour together and I think uh, the audience does too. Oh, absolutely. All those listeners out there, this is appreciation to everyone still hanging in there and not sick of us yet. So yeah, I, I think uh, I think we have some decent takes and some uh, some okay knowledge to what we talk about. So I, I hope you I hope you enjoy. Yeah. And, no, uh, no, no perf- two perfect episodes for, you know, an anniversary such as so. You know, meeting the halfway point of the season, but uh, two two huge episodes with uh, both huge endings. So I'm excited to get into uh, into it. Absolutely, and yeah. So we last week we really our our main conversation was about uh, Mike wanting out of the business because he knew the DEA was hot on his tail and he needed to get out because he had you know the, the DEA was tra- tailing him everywhere he went. He was he was really making fun of them, telling them to fuck off when they, when they would tail him, but he knew he can only survive this way for so much longer. So he wanted to flee the scene. He wanted to make some money, leave it for the legacy cost to the people in jail and also leave some to his uh, granddaughter, Kaylee. So he was about to do that until Walt got involved, uh, you know, and uh, you know, basically stole the methylamine from under Mike. And now heading into this episode, Shay, we're kind of in a holding pattern as to what kind of deal are they going to strike so that everybody can leave happy. Yeah, Walter's infamous ending words in the last uh, episode we talked about everybody wins, and you're thinking, well, if they can't sell off the methylamine, then how is how is uh, Mike going to get his five million dollars? Which ultimately is his ending goal is to get that $5 million and kind of make his, make his way out of the crime. We'll say crime life, but Mm. everything has a way of pulling itself back in. Um, But yeah, so we kind of start off this episode with the three, our three uh, main characters, Jesse, Mike and Walter kind of dress, go um, driving into the desert and they're going to a meet and they're meeting with Declan, who we mentioned in the last episode, he's kind of um, the, I guess, you could say competitor to Walter and the gang. He, you know, obviously has dealings with Mike in the past, but 
you know, he's walking into something where he thinks he's going to get uh, the full methylamine and basically get rid of his main competition. Uh, competition. Right. So they get there. Mike's like, it's your, it's your meeting, Walter. Like, this is on you. Uh, and Declan kind of is like, what the hell? Like, what's going on here? Where, where's the meth? Like, I don't see it. Where's the methylamine? I don't see any of it. But instead, Walt, you know, takes charge. And he says, you know, he chucks him a bag of, of his crystal. And he says, you know what? I'll cut you in for 35% of the profit. If you get rid of your cook right now, because he sucks. And let me be, you're my distribution. You, we make money. We make lots of money together. But Declan is not so on board with this because he goes like, I'm selling it now. Why the hell would I partner with you? Yeah, it, like, like he should. But uh, Walter is kind of fixing his own problem by, you know, Mike wants out and he's happy to leave Mike because of their relationship. But he sees this as an opportunity for him. If he can get this Declan guy to kind of run his business elsewhere, um, then he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to worry about any of that. And he can just kind of focus on cooking. The business side can remain with somebody else. Obviously, this Declan guy, he's pissed right away. You could tell that this ticks him off that, well, for one, Walter's as brash as to throw him his own product down on his feet and be like, this is trash. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's like, you know, who, who the hell are you? Like, and Walter just kind of smirks and he's like, you know who I am. And it's this kind of ongoing theme throughout this conversation where Walter's like, stop fucking around. You, you know, I'm the man and yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. Right. And, you know, he says, yeah, so, you know, you're going to be partners with me. Like you said, he's really arrogant. He goes, but you know, to do that, you're going to give 5 million to Mike as a, uh, let's just call it a finder's fee. And it's going to happen today. We're going to take that money right now. And then we'll, we'll ship you, you know, hundred pounds plus a week and you can get rid of it. And, you know, like you said, he kind of goes like, like, who are you? Like, why would I do business with you? And he goes, Hey, I killed Gus Fring. And he and Declan responds, No, he didn't. The the cartel took care of Fring. Goes, cartel. Cartel did nothing. He goes, You know who I am. Say my name. And it's this awkward. And he's like, No. And he goes, Say my name. And he keeps repeating it. And then finally Declan goes, Heisenberg. And Walt goes, You're goddamn right. <laughs> Yeah, and there's two th- two things we learn about this conversation, or one thing we learn, and one thing we already know. Uh, one thing we learn is that Jesse's not getting five million, or it doesn't yeah. appear that he's getting five million. Which, if we remember in the last uh, episode, he wants out too. He, yeah. he and Mike both agree that they want to walk away clean slate. And you know, Walter never once says, "Oh, by the way, this is my partner who's also leaving." So right. we're under the impression that Walter's still got his graphs inside Jesse. The second thing that we know is that Walter's always kind of had this, he wants to be recognized as the man. He wants to be known as the guy who killed Gus Spring, as the guy who's this drug lord slash, you know, highly intelligent chemist. And this is kind of him just, just outright telling this guy, you know, you know who I am. Like, I, I want that recognition finally from somebody. Give it to me where I stand. Right. He, he's like, um, He's like the opposite of like a great athlete where great athletes don't need to hear they're great athletes because they know it. He's yeah. like a fringe player that's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm Baker Mayfield. I'm a great quarterback. You know, I want to be talked about like the rest of the guys here. And he, he, he has to insert himself. And even Jesse's sitting there, standing there, he's very uncomfortable because so, he so clearly – wants what mike wants just to get out of it start fresh and following this deal you know jesse even says you know walt i'm still out i want my five million like that and that that's not changing but like you said walt says yeah well you know i'm gonna have to get stuff set up i'm gonna need your help to start and then you know what we'll talk about your money down the road but just let's get things going again and then we'll we'll revisit this conversation meaning basically not gonna happen yeah, his polite way. Yeah, the Walter polite way of saying you're not getting your money right now. Yeah. So yeah, Jesse's just kind of like, what the hell? But they get back to their uh, their garage, and Mike says, "Well, this is it." You know, uh, and Walt sarcastically says, "Yeah, it's been 
been a pleasure, Mike. Uh, we'll, we'll miss you. But Mike says, I'll handle legacy costs. And, uh, you know, you need, but what you need to do, Walter, is get to the DEA and get that bug out of there. And if you remember, he, he put a bug in a picture of Hank and Marie so they can monitor uh, Hank Schrader's conversations. He says, that's what you got to do. And well, yeah, yeah, I'll take care of it. So basically this is Mike saying goodbye to his, to his two partners. Yeah. And you know, of course, Walter doesn't really give a damn. <laughs> I think, I think Mike goes as far as saying like, Walter, you're kind of an idiot. And, you know, it's just him and Jesse left and, you know, Jesse, Jesse's like, so like I'm, I'm out too. And, you know, Mike gives him this look, like, just take care of yourself, kid. And he actually smiles, which you really, you rarely, rarely get a blank smile. And he shakes his hand and basically says, you know, good luck. Take care of your head. You're a good kid. And, you know, this we've, we've learned over the past two seasons that these guys have a pretty solid relationship, even though they don't always show it, but they do care for each other, which, you know, Jesse doesn't have too many people in his life yes. doing so. So it's kind of a, kind of an important scene for himself. Uh, absolutely. And another thing I noticed out of this scene is the whole time Walter's looking out the window at these two as they shake hands and he hates it. He yeah. hates that, that Jesse likes Mike more than he likes him and yeah. it's clearly bothering him, but he just stands there and shakes his head. And I, from the beginning, Walter has been very jealous of Mike. He hasn't liked Mike because I think Mike is actually quietly a very smart guy and Walter, as, as we just touched on, he likes to be recognized and he likes to be the smartest guy in the room. And Mike is never going to be the guy to throw Walter uh, flowers at any time. No, and he kicked his ass, which yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, Walter's got that in the back of his head for sure. Yeah, no, good, good point. Um, so then there's this, if we remember last episode, the great scene where Jesse eats dinner at the White House and it's the most uncomfortable meal and they talk about uh, Skylar cheating on Walt and it's just, it's great, uh, great TV. But Jesse and Walt drive the methylamine to the car wash and, you know, Walt's like, I was going to keep this here for a bit. No big deal. We just need, we need to hide it. And uh, it's like, Jesse, just back it in, back it in. And he's backing it in and he goes, hi, Mrs. White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just funny to see like he's yeah he's actually genuinely nice to her because i yeah. think like kind of like oh he knows this in situation and sky like poor she just doesn't want anything to do with him she's just like get the like get this hell away <laughs> get this kid away from me and uh sky skylar's kind of like she wants to know she's genuinely con concerned i would say mm -hmm. about why you know they had to shut down the, the car wash and why this huge barrel of methylamine is just kind of in there Mm -hmm. And Walter kind of just straight up says, none of your goddamn business. Yeah. Uh, go yeah, mind your business and go do your work. And right. Jesse kind of overhears this and he kind of has like a concerned look on his face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's kind of like, okay. He treats everybody like this. Like, it's not just me. Like, you yeah. know, I, he, I think he can relate to her because he treats Jesse like such a petulant child and he's treat he treats Skylar really shitty too, because he doesn't tell her anything. He think you know, he's still continuing to sell meth after she's pleading with him, please stop. Mm. And yeah, so not a good scene there. This episode, a lot of it centers around Mike and we know Mike, his ambitions for getting into this line of work is his granddaughter. So our next scene, we see a lawyer and he, he goes to a bank and he, talks to uh you could say a, a teller shay or maybe uh maybe a little higher up than that she does have all the keys to uh safety deposit boxes but he leaves her a little uh bit of chocolate candy whatever she likes that and she opens up all the boxes and there's probably eight to ten boxes that that she opens and he starts depositing money in, in all of them and we learn that the smaller boxes are for his uh for the legacy costs and yeah. then there's a bigger bigger one for kaylee which he leaves a note that says for kaylee on her 18th birthday so clearly this lawyer is doing the dirty work of mike uh you know giving get a lot legacy costs to the family without the dea police uh or irs for that matter finding out yeah yeah we learned that uh, they, they get a moderate not nothing 
concerning uh, 15k every every kind of pay payday. So this lawyer kind of just ro rotationally goes in there, pays, do, does the same thing over and over again. The family can the families also have keys, so they come in, take the money out, and they don't. You know, Mike doesn't give them all it all at once because obviously that's concerning. We find out later that it's you know it's smart because the DEA is actually tapping their bank account, so they know exactly how much money is going in and what they're spending at, right. at, at each time. So obviously Mike's kind of outwitted them once again in that sense. But um, yeah, like, like you said, there must be, it's like, right. Yeah, you can't get another dollar bill into uh, Kaylee. So Mike, Mike's good. Like he's got his legacy cost. Uh, he's got his money for Kaylee, which is like you said, his ending goal. And I uh, think things are looking pretty good. He kind of goes to the airport, he drops off a car and then basically, um, he leaves a bunch of cash in the car, leaves mm -hmm. the keys there at this kind of just leaves it at the airport, takes a cab back home. And then, you know, what, what's he, what's he doing next? Juggy? What's, what's his next move? See, yeah. Uh, before, before I get to, I wanted to ask you from a banking perspective, mm -hmm. uh, that woman opening up those safety deposit boxes, is she doing anything against protocol, anything against, you know, the, the quote unquote law? Well, <sighs> I wouldn't say so because uh, your private, like everything in your box is privacy. However, it's, it's very, very illegal to actually put money into a safety deposit box. I don't think many people actually know that, but you can't take out that. like, no. yeah, you can, you're not allowed to take out like currency and, you know, exchanges from uh, like just the, the rotation. You know what I mean? So putting right. a bunch of money like that is really, really illegal, which is a red flag on its own. But I don't think she can get into much trouble because obviously she doesn't know what's in there and she, she doesn't have a right to know. She's just kind of that other key that unlocks, uh, unlocks Avery's deposit box. So right. maybe, maybe it's illegal to have more than one deposit box. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Because it just seems strange to open like 10, like that's really an excessive number. Well, yeah, maybe in her, in her sense, maybe she could bring that higher up and that would be an alarming, but because she's getting sweetened by all these treats that he keeps right. bringing, she's just like, well, I'm going to let him keep coming back because I know I'm going to get something for it. Right. So Mike kind of says that the lawyer says they'll get their money, you know, uh, like you said, kind of biweekly, kind of like a paycheck. He says, good. He drives away, drops off the stuff at the airport and he gets home and he's pouring himself a, a glass of coffee and he gets a knock on the door. It's the DEA ready to knock down the door. And he goes, eh, hold your horses. I'm coming. I'm coming. And we see Hank smiling cavalier cocky and he kind of waving the search warrant in his face and to his credit mike has you know prior to this gotten rid of all his guns everything that could be a criminal charge he's dumped into like a well his computer it's it's like this well in the middle of nowhere and he's got he's got it there and uh he's got nothing to hide they search through the whole place and come up with jack you know what yeah, you can see the concern, the level of concern coming from uh, Mike, or not Mike, coming from Hank, because he's like, okay, I thought I busted this guy. How How is he one step ahead of me once again? And, you know, this comes to eventually bite Hank on the ass. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that essentially they have to let Mike go, and Mike looks like he's home free. looks like, you know, he, a, a free man, essentially, because they have nothing on him. Right. So yeah, he, he does plan on leaving, but I do think this gives Mike thought he had more time than he, than he actually does as we see, but he, he feels pretty good because he has nothing to hide at, at this point. Um, Jesse and Walter, we talk, they still, there's still some friction and Walt's kind of setting up a lab and Jesse shows up and just says like, okay, okay. Can we talk about our, our deal here? And Walt goes, yeah, yeah, just a second. But you know, I've been thinking, and we need to cook at least a hundred pounds a week. Fifties is not enough. Like we need to cook a hundred pounds a week. And that, that's, that's the sweet spot. And uh, Jesse goes like, are you not hearing me? Like I'm out. Like I want I want my money and I'm out of here. Like why, what don't you get about this? Yeah. Yeah. He's, and he's getting outraged. And then Walter, because he doesn't want to let Jesse go, just kind of gets pissed himself. He's like, you know he's just like well you know what what are you going to do like we have something we're the best at this we are the best cooks in the world how could you just walk away from that to 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 surrender that to nothing and jesse's like 
that doesn't matter to me. I, I want my five million and, uh, and I want out. And Walter makes a pretty good point. He's like, well, you know, if you if you don't like making dirty money, why are you going to take dirty money? Mm-hmm. So you're going to take five million from me, which you know how I got it, obviously. And that is that going to make you feel good? No, he's like, I'll, I'll do you the holy thing and I'll hold on to it. And you can just basically walk away. Or he basically tells him to fuck off. Yeah, basically, you leave now, you get nothing. He screams at him. And Walt even has the audacity to say, yeah, you know what happened to the kid? That affected me just as much as it did you. And Tries to pretend it, yeah. And Jesse hates that even more. Uh, So, like you said, they get into this big shouting match, and basically they're – their relationship is over. Uh, you know, he, Jesse's done. He's accepted no more money, but he's out of the, the meth game, which is a positive thing for him. Um, we'll pivot to Hank. And you mentioned he's in a, he's in a meeting with basically all the higher ups, all the ASACs of the DEA. And the man who hired him is on a, a zoom call, so to speak, uh, back at, back in the day. And he, you know, they're talking and Hank's going through his papers and he's, He's looking over pictures of Mike and he's sitting at, he's sitting and he's at home and he's doing different things. And finally the, the boss man yells like, Hank, are you, are you there? Like, are you ready? And he says, uh, and he goes, guys, just, just leave and give me a minute with Hank. And Hank is essentially scolded for spending money on the Ermin trout case, which has gotten them nowhere. And he even gets, you know, yelled at for, giving out a search warrant which is not his job anymore he's not supposed to be in the field and hank basically just has to sit there and be like yeah sorry like i shouldn't be doing that yeah yeah well yeah essentially hank's job now is to look over multiple cases and mm-hmm. to out see every all, all you know all departments but he's picking favorites and you know that's you can't you can't do that in his position and you know this this higher up, I forget his name, but he just goes, you know, no no more money is going to be spent on Mike Ehrman Trout. You know, we're not tailing him anymore. That you know that's it, that's done. And uh, you know, I don't want to have to tell you this again. Right. So he goes, yes, sir, no problem. And Gomi comes in. And he goes, yeah, like no more money in Ehrman Trout. He goes, oh shit, I thought we were getting somewhere. But he goes, you know, we've been we've been uh, you know he's been talking to. Jeez, we think there's this lawyer that's really sketchy that's kind of blocking us up from from people talking and he goes the lawyer huh well tail him and gomi goes well i thought you weren't no money and he said i couldn't tail ermin trout he didn't say nothing about a lawyer i'm your boss tail him and uh they they start tailing this lawyer yeah yeah which is <laughs> interesting <laughs> Um, but you know, funny, funny scene here. Like we obviously know how much Mike cares, but it's almost like he gets obsessed with Juggy, right? Like with every mm-hmm. case that he's on, like he's caught, like he didn't catch him, but he eventually took down Gus's empire. And, yeah. you know, there's the crumbles of the, the, the castle, you can say at the very bottom, but he still wants those pieces. Do you, you know, do you think this is overkill or do you think that this is good cop work? Wait, what's your opinion? Um, I could see why it's overkill because you got the head honcho, so to speak, right? You got the, even though we know Walt is the, the, the bad guy here, he's the cook. Gustavo was the bigger player because he has distribution. He was, you know, dealing with the cartel. So, but if it's still on the street, I do think you have some, I think you have some responsibility to still look after it because as a member of the DEA, as a, as a member of law enforcement, having drugs on the street is not a good thing. Is that, I think that's just going to lead to future crimes. So I do think Hank does have a leg to stand on, but I don't know if he has both, you know, firmly cemented into the ground uh, in this, in this case. Yeah, no, I just, just thought of that myself as, mm-hmm. as it seems, I'm just like, just a re- reoccurring theme within the show, people yeah. being obsessed with their jobs, you, whether it's Walt with, is meth empire or you know hank crushing bad guys in the in the background right but, I, uh, I think he, he definitely has ocd for sure because probably, he, can, yeah. he can't let things go yeah yeah absolutely i guess you could say walter has a little bit of that too so i get i guess the brothers-in-law as it, as it were uh do have something uh do have a few things in common yeah. um 
we see Walter is still cooking. Jesse's gone, but he doesn't care. But he has a new lab assistant, and this would just make Jesse so happy to see who he's hired. None other than Todd. Yeah, Todd the Bod. He's uh, he's he's back on. They they're, they've continued to kind of cook within, I guess, these homes that are being you know pesticides are going yeah. through, and uh, Todd, Todd's there with his notepad, and he's and he's actually like really really good with the sense that he's learning. He's learning. He's applying himself, which is all. Walter really wanted and you know he's like oh, am I doing a good enough job like you know and Walter's like you're you're fine like just just relax like just just pay attention and make sure you're following all these steps and he even goes as far as saying you know we, okay we, you know we got our first batch done this is pretty much it what let's talk money and even Todd says uh, you know I'm not going to talk money until I figure this out which Walter just loves uh, well, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. He's basically oh, not paying him. <laughs> this is this is great. You know, I, I love this. Um, and he got a heart, heart on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He's falling falling more and more in love with Todd. Uh, you know, the, so yeah. Walt Walt loves it. Um, I guess we can put these two together. So Walt goes to see Hank again, and he's doing his fake crying spiel about Skyler and now. No, she just doesn't love me anymore, Hank. It's just terrible at home. And he, you know, he goes, do you got any coffee? He goes, oh, yeah, co- 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 coffee? Yes, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, and he, he he just breaks to get out of the room. He loves that. And at the time, Walter grabs the bug. Well, well simultaneously, the lawyer for Mike, our little sneaky little guy, I believe his last name was Goldberg. So, of course, they had to make him Jewish. Um, he shows up to the bank and he goes to see the woman. He's got cake pops with, uh, I think that's what you call them, yep. with uh, little smiley faces on them. But you can tell by her body language that she's not excited about this treat. And I, maybe he thought, okay, I just didn't have a great showing today. But did you pick up on that, that she was, was like really uncomfortable when he showed up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could tell that, you know, it, it threw him off. Not enough, but it threw him off a little bit like, OK, well, that's not the, the normal reaction I get. And you could tell so- something was going to happen. But, you know, you weren't exactly you weren't exactly true. You know, this guy makes his way into the vault. He's he's got the bag full of cash open. He's got all his, uh, you know, all his little tills open and. It's this funny scene where he kind of looks and Gomi and two other DEA agents are just standing in the doorway and he goes, Hey, <laughs> and Gomi, oh, Gomi, big smile on his face. It just looks at him like, Hey, like I got, and he's basically saying, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you were the lawyer, do you think you would have picked up on it? If you were a good lawyer, and I think you, if you're solid, you're, you're not going in there. Yeah, I, I think you read body language and you know that something something's off about this this uh, this we'll say we'll call it drive by, mm-hmm. and yeah, you, you should dip from that. But this guy kind of clueless, probably just thinking, well, it's just you know maybe she's just having a bad day, or you right. know maybe she's just not happy today. Then yeah, what what can you do? But obviously, you know he's caught, and you know go. So, so we we kind of flip back to when. Mm-hmm. And you know, Walter's sipping on his coffee and Gomi walks up to Hank. He's like, I got to, I got to talk to you really quick. And Hank's like, Oh, well, what is it? And Walter's over listening to this conversation. He's like, we got him. We got the lawyer. And you know, we're, you know, we're going to get Irma trout. And you know, Walter's ears kind of perk up like, Oh shit. Like this might not be, this might not be good news. Yeah. So they say, yeah, he's going to flip. Like he's going to, he's going to talk. And Walter is just, completely irate and so we flip to mike he's at the park with his granddaughter and the lawyer calls him up and he goes hey mike like yeah just you know something weird's going on i gotta talk to you about the money like something's weird and he goes well, what do you mean like i can probably meet you in a couple hours and he goes no that's not good for me like it's gotta be right now and he goes well where are you and he, mike says well i'm just at the park and you know with, with my with my granddaughter okay I'll, I'll be right there i'll come to you but before mike can even realize it walter gives him a call and he says mike they're coming for you they're coming for you you gotta get out 
and he sees two patrol cars show up and it's the first time we actually see mike scared he he looks up and he goes oh my god they got me but he's able to hide behind a tree and get out of there before the cops can arrest him yeah and you know i'm sure you've watched this movie before juggy but was there a movie that you thought of in this situation where he's got to pick between taking the rap and basically you know helping his daughter or leaving and not getting caught yeah um good question Mm. this Uh, this is one of my it's one of my favorite flicks uh but i'll I'll let you i'll let you not the town no no they don't have kids good good point though I feel like there's something there's some point in that show. That was like a girlfriend. He kind of had to pick between her and uh, the money. Yeah, essentially he left. Well, that one, that one he left to go over. The movie Heat with De Niro and Al Pacino. Oh, it, gotcha. He lives, yeah. lives by a rule. If you if you can't leave her, if you can't save her in thirty seconds, you have to leave her. That's right. his like con. That's just one of his con man rules. His number right. one rule, say. Right. And I had I had this running through my mind, thinking, well, he can save his daughter or go be with her for another minute, maybe for the last time of his life, or he can run away and never see her ever again. So yeah, I kept, kept running through my mind and uh, you know, he's hiding behind a tree. Cops are starting to swarm the park and you know, he, he leaves because you know, he doesn't want to get caught. What would you have done? Uh, I, it, that's tough. That's tough. I, I think if knowing that he has the backup cash at the airport, right. It, it makes it seem like he had a plan and he knew that something like this could happen. If you had nothing else, I think that would have been, I think it would have been easy for him to just give up and be, be with his granddaughter one more time. Right. Knowing he's going to prison for the rest of his life, but you know, at least he gets one last hug with her kind of thing. Yeah. I, I see that point for sure. So Jesse and Walt go to see Saul and you know, he's not like sympathetic. He goes, that idiot Mike. He hires Goldberg. <laughs> like, does he not know what a friggin' professional lawyer looks like? Like I'm sitting right here in his clown suit. Yeah. He's just he's completely bent out of shape about it. But in the midst of him, you know, just belly aching, he gets a call on one of his burners, and he says, you know, my uh, it's Mike, and he goes, Mike, they took all the money, including Kaylee's. It's all seized by the, by the DEA. It's all gone. And so he goes, shit. Okay, Saul, you need to go to the airport. I have a go bag there. You need to bring it to me because I'm I'm getting the hell out of town, but they're on my ass like like grass. So he goes, Well, they're probably tailing me, Mike. And Jesse, like you said, he is like his his son. He goes, I'll I'll do it, Mike. Like, I'll go get it. Don't worry, I'll I'll handle it. And he goes, No, kid, no. I pay Saul, he can do it. And Jesse continues to play, but Walter just says, you know, you know, they don't even know about me, Mike, I'll go get it. And just tell me where you want me to be. And I'll come meet you. Which is funny that Mike just kind of said, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. if anyone's going to get caught, yeah, Walter, it'd be, it'd be, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay for yeah. you. Yeah. So it's just really interesting scene. It's kind of down by this, uh, this nice little lake through this. I, I don't know what kind of trees they were. I would say like, it almost looks like a bunch of spread out apple trees mm-hmm. and you know, Mike's just waiting there for Walter. And Walter pulls up, he's got the cash in hand, and he's like, you know, I'm going to give this to you, but I want one thing from you before I give it to you. I want to list your nine guys that you're protecting. And Mike's like, no, no, I'm not giving you that. Just give me that. And, you know, even goes as far as says, Walter, you know, you should also probably take leave town yeah. and, you know, get away. And Walter's like, well, I got a family. I got, I, I, I can't just leave. You know, and like I said before, Mike, obviously Walter is physically intimidated by Mike <laughs> because Mike just kind of walks up to him, takes the Grabs bag it. from him yeah. and, and that's it. And as Mike is walking away, Walter goes, you're welcome. Like basically shouts, you're welcome. And Mike turns around with this, like this face, like he's going to kill him and says, Walter, you know, since, since I've met you, all you've done is your ego and your pride has just self-destructed everything we had a good thing with fring and you went and ruined that because you know you just just couldn't be a silent warrior in this fight yeah. and you had to be a main character you had to be the king where we could have done so like we could have made so much money we could have made twice the money you made he couldn't and, be sam was yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. He, he, 
<laughs> and and you know he kind of gives it to Walter, and Walter just kind of like grinds his teeth and doesn't say anything. And Mike keeps walking, and then uh, I'll I'll let you finish this this episode off. Yeah. So when Walter went and got the bag, he opened it, and in the bag was basically like you mentioned a bunch of cash. I think a passport or maybe a fake passport and a gun, a Glock. And we think Walter zips it up, but Mike gets to the car. He starts it and he opens the bag and he looks inside and he realizes that the gun is missing. And at the same time, Walter is speed walking towards Mike's car. And as Mike looks up towards the window, Walt is there and Walt shoots him through the window right in the belly well mike guns the car he goes about a foot two feet away smashes into a tree walter is just completely uh, i, I don't think walter believed that he did it that he mm. shot mike so he goes to the car still got the gun in hand and he realizes mike is not there the door is open so he goes down to the beach and mike is basically just sitting on this big boulder and looking out into the to the beautiful calm water as the, as the sun's going down and Walter, such an idiot says, oh, I guess I could have got the names from Lydia. Oh, shit. Sorry, Mike. Like I didn't. And he goes, shut the fuck up, Walter. Let me die in peace. And eventually about a few seconds later, Mike falls off the boulder and that's the curtain call for, Mr. Ermintrope. We needed a moment of silence for, for yeah. our friend Mike. Yeah. yeah. He a, an unbelievable character and uh, not not a fitting ending for someone who no. just just meant so much to the show. And we just see the depths of the Walter's willing to go. It, clearly, uh, this was done out of rage. If Walter thought thought this through, even two mm-hmm. seconds, Mike didn't have to die mike could have got away pretty pretty easily and lived this you know a seamless life where he would have been in hiding but at least he was alive and i think mike would be the best person in the history of the world at staying hidden because he doesn't need to talk to anybody he just goes about life right and like you said and you don't mike is no risk to um rat he's not gonna say he's not gonna rat out um jesse or walter that's he he take the ball before he'd route them out, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. We, we saw his loyalty to the ring and, you know, yeah, uh, unmatched through, through it all. And, you know, he doesn't like Walter, but I think he'd, he'd even not rat Walter out just because it's kind of written in his blood and he doesn't, you know, it's not, not about him. But yeah, yeah. That when, even the second time watching this, you're like, ah, oh, like this is just, I remember- but you're right. The first time I watched the show, I was in first year uni. So I was in my little uh, dorm room, Shay. And I uh, I was so disheartened when Mike died because I did feel something coming. I said, it's nothing ever is going to good going to happen to anybody on this show. But if anybody deserved it, yes, Mike is not a perfect person. He was, you know, a distribution. He was and he was helping sell meth. But at least he had a good purpose for doing it, where Walter started with a good purpose and it completely shifted from that very early on uh, to, you know, just selfish behavior and wanting that, you know, the big man on campus, so to speak. Yeah, no, absolutely not. uh, Not not the way we we wanted to see him go, but he uh, yeah, he meant a lot to the show. And, you know, you could you could kind of say like that was the, the curtain call for Frings higher ups. And yes. you know it, it was him and him, and we see it episode eight. It's time to take out the the rest of the cast. Yes, so we start episode eight with Walter staring at this fly in in the uh, in the office of, of their garage, and it kind of brings you back to the episode mm. season four entitled "Fly." Uh, but he's just kind of staring at it, and we see Todd get dropped off in a cab, and. Walsh is staring at Todd's like, Mr. White, hello. And he goes in there and he says, uh, did you take, I took care of the car. And he said he brings it, brought it to the, to the junkyard as the guy that we seen them help uh, dispose of the information on the computer. And, you know, just to 
The great character played by uh, Carl uh, Billy Madison as well. Uh, he's an, an iconic character in the show. He also appears in uh, El Camino as well. A little spoiler. Um, but then they start the process of disposing of Mike. He's in the trunk of the car and they're getting the barrel out. They're getting the acid. But as they're about to do this, the garage door opens. They're both completely like, well, what the hell? And Jesse, uh, sorry, Todd closes the, tr- the trunk before Jesse can notice what's inside. Yeah, Jesse uh, kind of walks in. And, you know, at this point, we can, we can determine that Jesse and Walter are probably not speaking. Jesse goes, I, I just heard from uh, Saul, you know, that they're, they're ratting on everybody. We don't have much time. You know, what, what are we going to do about this? And Walter, petty as he is, just kind of goes, we, like, you know, like, I'm taking care of this. You're just going to kind of be shoot to the side. And Jesse's just kind of sitting there like, like, what the hell? Like, am I just nothing to you? And Walter just says, you know what? He's probably doing that in order to get him to leave, which I understand. Like, he's kind of being an ass because he's like, okay, well, I need need him to get out of here before he gives two, two things. And then Jesse, of course, ask, is, you know, how, how's Mike? Like, is yeah, did, he, did know, he get away? Did he get away? And Walter answers with, yeah, he's gone. And you're just kind of like, oh, <laughs> this fucking ass. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't technically fully lie. Uh, he is gone. But, uh, yeah, this is just another yeah, shitty, shitty moment from our friend Walter. <sighs> so... We start pivot to the start of the episode with our laundry man who we met. Gomi talked to him that day, Dennis, meeting with Hank. And Dennis is pretty cavalier and his, well, his lawyer is anyway. And he says, Hey, we want full immunity. Like, we don't care. We, we don't have limited sentence. We want full immunity. But Hank's like, Screw you. I got eight other guys who are ready to flip. And you want, hey, I'll just find somebody who just wants probation. So basically, he leaves the room and Dennis is looking at his lawyer like what the hell mm-hmm. yeah Hank, Hank has kind of got them you know by the by the nuts in the sense yeah. that he can keep doing that all day it's not like the yeah. it's not like the prisoners are ever going to communicate with each other yeah, they, Some they of have them... no no they have no evidence to prove that he doesn't have it yeah yeah exactly so for them it's got, for Hank it's all mind games and you know you see him play it really well and we find out that you know Eventually, one of them is going to flip. It's just, uh, I think Dennis ends up saying, hey, like, I'll do it mm-hmm. before Hank can leave. Right. So then we go to our friend Lydia at the same coffee shop. She's sitting there and walks in Walter, but he's not really Walter. He's Heisenberg. because He's got the big fedora on. He's got the glasses. <laughs> and he sits down. And he says, um, uh, so you got the names? Like, let's go. And she goes, no, no, I, I don't. Uh, they're in my head. He goes, well, why the hell aren't they on a piece of paper? Like, let's go. She goes, well, how do I know you won't kill me if, when I give you the names? And he goes, oh, I already, I already freaking told you I'd take care of you. You'd be safe. And another really gut punch here. She says, no, you said you protect me from Mike. And he goes, yeah, I've done that. He's no longer a threat. And she kind of picks up on that. He's dead. Yeah. And then also proceeds to say, well, you told me you protect him from Mike, not from you. Mm. And Walter caught, caught in his web of lies. Kind of, uh. mm. And Lydia, Lydia is smart. She we is. realize she's uptight, but we know that she is, she's very skilled at what she does. Yeah. And she goes, I, I'm, my job is basically moving things from point A to point B. And I'm really good at doing that without being hidden. And she gives Walter a business proposition, says, listen, have you ever thought about getting outside the U.S. and distributing to somewhere else, like the Czech Republic? Which I didn't really know this, but a lot of people in Czech Republic, they're hooked on meth. So, I, I looked it up, and it's actually true. Yeah, I, I was shocked. I, was, I, did not, I don't know much about the Czech Republic, but obviously it's got a problem there. And, you know, she goes, well, in, in, you know, over there, the best stuff you can get is probably 60% pure. So where your stuff would clean house over there, 99.1% would, ju- would just dominate. So she says, well, give me 10 pounds and 
I, I'll transfer it over there. I'll show you how I'll do it. And I'll, you know, I'll flip you whatever's left and I will take, uh, I think it was like 30, 35% mm -hmm. cut out of the business. And the whole time, you know, Walter is usually the one in control of the car, at least in the last season, uh, season and a half, he's usually the one in control of conversations. I find at, for example, the one you had with Declan in the, the beginning right. of the last episode, I felt like Lydia was really confident and she was really the one taking control of the whole conversation in this place. Yeah, and uh, absolutely, I agree. And she she has this, uh, she's a woman that is very self-assured of herself and very much, she knows what she knows and she knows this business. And, you know, even Walter says, uh, I mean, why wouldn't Gus do this? You know, he was a genius. And she goes, yeah, we were about to do it yeah, until you killed him. Uh, <laughs> and that kind of ruined things. So he even, I think Walter even liked that a little bit more because he goes, oh, well, Gus is going to do this. Well, I can yeah. do it, you know? And she goes, yeah, I'll take 30% of the take. And he goes, okay. No, I like it. You know, that, and it, it, honestly, Shay, it's brilliant because, he should send all of it. Fuck Declan. Mm. He should send as much as he can to Czech Republic because how's that ever going to come back to him again? She said, you're the evidence of you making this is 200,000 miles away, like across, a, across a plane, yeah. so many different locations. It'll never be tied back to you. Yeah. And it will. And essentially the, the nose, Hank's nose, we could say would be, you'd be like, Oh, well, it's off the street. Well, that yeah. means they've stopped making it. And therefore, I can stop looking for them. But I think this deal that he's made with Declan is kind of in place at this point. Mm -hmm. And I think he's kind of scared. Like, if he ruins that, then, well, he, Declan could be. He'll be in the little, ground. Well, he'd be a little upset. Like, okay, I made this great deal with you. You're making tons of money. Well, I'm going to shut that down right now. Right. Yeah, he is He is a good businessman of somewhat until, until that person tries to usurp him in power. So then Lydia slides in the list. They shake hands. And she kind of says, we're going to make a lot of money together, which he loves to hear. And he lets Todd know, yeah, I think it's time I meet your uncles. And well, what's funny, sorry to interrupt, Jackie, no, but go ahead. before this, under his hat, like we said, he walked in with his glasses fedora under his mm -hmm. hat was the ricin. So he went there fully planning on killing Lydia yeah. or at least attempting to. Yeah. And, and she called it. She you know, she showed her hand and said, you know, you're going to kill me if I don't do this. And, you know, it kind of just shows the, the lengths Walter's willing to go to. Cause once he had the nine lists, well, she's the, she's the 10th person that he has to get rid of. Right. right. Mike's gone after her. Every, Gus is dead. Everybody's gone. So she's the last link of the chain, but yeah, yeah she's smart enough to, to provide him with some, with some good information. So he goes to, Talks to Todd. He says, it's about time I meet your uncles. And basically, these guys are sons of anarchy, but even more bigots. Yeah. Uh, and they, you know, sons of anarchy did have some black friends, but it was kind of weird how they were aligned. I found that weird on the show because they were so openly racist. Uh, at least Clay and a number of them were. Uh, but nevertheless, not as good a show as this one. Uh, they have they have swastikas tattooed on their hands. That's a real yeah. commitment to uh, being a piece of shit. But uh, they clearly a white percentages biker gang, and you know they uh, they have an ability to kill people because they have members on the inside in prison. And Walt's kind of sitting there, and he has his plan. And Jack, the the main leader, uh, Todd's uncle, says, "Yeah, we can do it, but it's not going to be the way you want it done." And Walt goes, uh, excuse me, it can be done the way I want it done. And that's what I'm paying you for. So get it done the way I want it. And uh, yeah, he's again, cavalier with these, this group of people that I would have not talked to like that. No, you, you see the stones come out more and more, obviously yeah. as the show progresses, but this, this takes it to another level. He's in a hotel room. He's got Todd there, which I mean, Todd's you could consider a partner slash friend, but these guys would easily, I'm sure if Todd wasn't there, just dice him Off up him. and kind of, yeah, yeah put, put him up, put him in the mattress and that's about it. But, you know, this guy kind of laughs and he's like, okay, you know what, you got, you got stones, you are, pay you must be paying them a lot of money. Yeah, had to have. Hits. 
these hits would not be easy whatsoever. And we find out that he wants it all done in the span of two minutes. So that way, and I, I thought about this, I'm like, why does he want it done in two minutes? But he wants it done because he realizes that if one or two of them go missing, the other ones are going to be automatically put right into protection right. because of the information they know. So he, he does have, you know, he does have the right motive and why he wants it done so fast. Right. And it, we learn it's also these guys are in three separate prisons, so it's even yeah. more difficult to coordinate. But we get a we get a montage and boy, this was some kind of tough to watch. We start with the lawyer. He's at the payphone. These guys come up to him and just start shiving the hell out of him until yeah, he's 20 times in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> Over overkill. <laughs> yeah. um, we see a guy get jumped in the hallway trying to exit a door. A guy's killed in the shower. We see a guy laid out in a cell. And poor Dennis gets it the worst because mm. I think he might be in witness already. Or he's pretty close. You see, he's in a he's in like in a really a nicer cell uh on the main level, kind of below the stairs. But anyway, they get their hands on acid or some, you know, some sort of uh, you know, some sort of liquid. They open up the little flap for food to kind of sit your tray on. They dump acid in there and then light him on fire. And my God, that had to have been, I mean, that, that's just, I mean, just killing somebody and then there's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Top, top 10 movie deaths of all time. Um, but it, you, you know, going back to movies, Joe, this is, you know, straight out of the Godfather, you got Walter who safe in the you know comfort of his own home. Yeah. And you know, he's, his dirty doings is being held out by, other people and you know he's kind of just eliminating all his threats uh, all at once and you know it's this funny scene where hank is taking this picture with his soccer team it looks like you know smiling having a good time and he gets pulled away and he finds out that all his witnesses that he needed to kind of turn and get the last little bit of uh, frank's operation just to perish yeah so oddly enough Walter says, yeah, why, why don't I go to Hank's tonight? You know, just, just rub it in some more. And Walt is there playing with Holly and, you know, Marie kind of says, okay, Hank's home. Like, it's not, it's not a good day. Like, don't like, just, just kind of shut up. Like, don't act happy. Hank gets in there and just pours himself a drink. And he's just kind of sitting there in silence. And he starts talking about this story about how this summer job uh, and how, he used to go out there and kind of mark trees that people, you know, lumberjacks or, you know, woodsmen would come in and chop them down. And Walt's like, oh, that sounds like fun. Like you'd be outside. He goes, no, sucked. Uh, and he goes, but you know what? Maybe I'm, I'm thinking back. It wasn't, it wasn't so bad because it was easier. It was easier doing that than chasing monsters. Yeah. One and sitting right there. And one sitting across from him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's like, I think about that job more and more. And, you know, it's true. Even, even watching this, I'm like, yeah, you know, I've, I've had jobs that were maybe more grueling to the body, but maybe not as easy on the mind, which, you know, some, I can't obviously, uh, I can't empathize that, that deeply with Hank because I'm sure mm -hmm. he's, he's living somewhat of a nightmare, but yeah, that's, it's, it's tough. And obviously we see the emotional, and physical toll obviously we've uh, that hank's gone through with this with yeah. this job and all to think that it's walter's doing is kind of uh you know kind of ironic in a sense yeah, yeah it's super super ironic it's gotta be super frustrating that he's sitting right there and walter knows it damn well but he's just like yeah that's that's too bad hank like yeah i, I wish i knew how to help you uh but so we then go to this montage walt and todd are cooking a lot and yeah. they are making a lot of money because we see walter bringing it in to uh to skylar by the bucket loads with, under the cans of coke we see him shipping it to shipping meth to lydia it's basically a montage of them making money making money and one thing i noticed through this shay is you notice it had to have been a decent amount of time because you see walter really starting to get fatigued He's, he's starting to yawn. He seems like he's getting worn out from doing all this work. Yeah. I mean, it, it's obviously time because like he said, they're probably cooking a hundred pounds a week mm -hmm. to give to Dale, uh, to De to Declan plus, you know, add another 10 pounds onto that for what they said to the Czech Republic. 
so he, he's working a ton and it's not like Walter's the healthiest man in the world. The man yeah. had cancer a year ago. So, you know, this, this has obviously been a, a, a tough road for him. And, you know, at the end of this, you know, giant montage is just kind of him. You're right. Just, he's just in the chair yawning and he's actually at the doctor's office mm -hmm. and, you know, we see him uh, get a, a CT scan and uh, funny enough, um, when he's in the bathroom, uh, he's, he's wiping his hands down and he just kind of looks up and he's got this, like this frown upon his face. And as he exits, we see the, the same, um, I guess, paper towel dispenser that he mm -hmm. absolutely, <laughs> that he absolutely destroyed when he found out that he didn't have cancer anymore. Right. <laughs> it's funny, funny scene. Cause I, he, uh, just walks past him, like say, kind of shaking his head. So Skyler goes to Marie's junior's happier. Now uh, he, he's kind of helped playing with Holly with his mother. She's starting to walk a little bit and Marie chimes in after junior leaves. And she says, I think it's time for the kids to go home. Like me and Hank have been talking. It's been three months. Like it's, you know, I think, you know, you, you and Walt have been through a lot. So, you know, we know that, but we think it's time. Like, you guys just, you know, the kids should better with them at home. We, we love having them. We're not telling you that they should, that they have to leave by any means, but she is like, you know, we do think that they should be, they should be home now. Yeah. It's basically, she's saying like, to, in order to repair the family at this point, mm -hmm. you have to be a family to repair it. So, right. to, you know, I, I think this is Marie's way of saying, well, if it's, it's not working at this point, you know, it's don't, never going to work. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to work. And, you know, Skylar, Skylar's happier, obviously, than she, who she was previously, because, you know, when she's with the kids, she's smiling, she's, she's happy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as soon as she goes home, obviously, it's, you know, wine and cigs. And, uh, <laughs> and she's, you know, she kind of goes back to being like, like, how can we do this? And she, she finally goes out and she's, she's looking around, the screen doors open and she walks out and there's Walter just sitting at the pool. You know, he's not doing anything. He's just looking. And I kind of forget Jogi, what she says to him, but he just it says, take a drive with up. me. Yeah. So, yeah, he's kind of like, you want to do something with me? Like, this is this is a new one. Yeah. So she drives to a storage unit. And what we see is she gets in. There's just this sh big sheet under a mountain of something. And she takes the sheet off and it's just a mountain. And I mean, a mountain of cash. And Walter's even a bit stunned. Shit. He's the one bringing in all this money, but I don't think he could believe that he made that much. He goes, this is all mine. And he goes, she goes, yeah, I stopped counting a while ago and had to have been three, 4 million in there. I, I think anyway. Oh, oh, at least. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, wow. Like, wow. Um, uh, this is something else. And Scholar says, you, we, you started this because you wanted our family to be taken care of. We have enough money here to spend for, you know, generations if we really know how to just, you know, spend our money wisely. And she says, when is enough enough? I want my kids back, please. Basically yeah. telling them, can you please get out of the math business? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of showing like, are, are you satisfied yet with, mm -hmm. with what you've become? Um, to put it in perspective, uh, this weekend I overheard, you know, someone told me that Pablo Escobar waited his money. And that's that's what Skyler was doing at one point, except that she didn't know the nomination, so it didn't really matter. But right. not that, you know, Walter's on, in that type of level, but he is making money so fast he doesn't have time to count it, which just kind of shows you the, you know, I guess the, the drug portion of how this has gone. He just doesn't know what to do with his money at this point. And you know, it really does kind of open up uh, Walter's eyes and, you know, he just kind of comes home one day. Skylar's there washing the dishes. I think am I skipping anything? by him? No, he brings a, a sack of cash to Jesse. Oh, yes. OK, yeah, yeah we should go over that first. He, he he visits Jesse at his home, which obviously they haven't talked in a long time. Jesse looks a like he. Well, oh, yeah, I was going to get to that, but mm. he, he looks like. He's been kind of smoking pot, maybe 
having beers, maybe not into hard drugs, but he's definitely been kind of rooting back to his old ways, we'll say. Yeah. And well, you know, he's kind of surprised. So he, he looks, he looks, peeks through the door and he sees, you know, he sees Walter and he automatically goes somewhere else and then opens the door. Like you said, he, he went to go grab a gun because he doesn't know what Walter is going to do. We don't know if this is a friendly visit or mm. Walter's eliminating, you know, every, you know, uh, anyone who knows anything about him in this empire that he's built. And Walter just kind of, we know his purpose there by the end of the conversation, but Walter really just kind of wants to see how Jesse's doing. I think in a sense, did you get that or? Yeah, I I think so. He's, he generally tried to be like, yeah, they start talking about the van, uh, about their Mm -hmm. RV. And he goes, remember that thing? And you had to, I had to wait by the side of it. You had to go get gas and, I had to pray that nobody stopped to help us. Yeah, that thing sucked. I saw a newer model and they're having this, trying to have just a normal conversation. And the Jesse clearly lying says, yeah, I got to go meet somebody. Uh, he goes, no, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, I gotta go. And on the way out in passing, Walter just goes, yeah, well, I left something for you on, on the porch. And Jesse's still like, uh, is it like a bomb? Is it like, uh, you know, what, what is it here? Goes, opens up the bag slowly and realizes it's, I think it's the, it's the, the money owes him, uh, at yeah. least a good chunk of it. Two huge black bags full of, full of cash. Jesse drags him in and he kind of throws the gun across the floor. Uh, you know, I think really ashamed and also kind of worried that he re- resorted back into his old tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I couldn't tell because obviously he's relieved that Walter was there for a good purpose and not to, mm-hmm. not to take him out. But in the same sense, Dougie, do you, you know, do, do you think well, Jesse's happy to get that money or do you think he's kind of like, Oh, well, like. I, I think in it a is. sense, it's not great for Jesse because he feels like he owes Walt something potentially. Cause it's never like Walt does something. He doesn't give and then not expect something in return. He's like, mm-hmm. okay, I did something good for you. Do three things. Nice for me now. Uh, <laughs> So I think he's kind of like, okay, I was out. Elite, yeah, you're right. You're smoking pot, drinking beer, but he was okay. But now he's like, okay, I have more drug money. I have more potential problems. I'm kind of back in now. Yeah. Yeah. And he, I mean, one, one part of the conversation we missed, Jesse kind of, he brings up the fact that there's no witnesses. So he kind of knows Walter did take care of it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, maybe he's relieved in the sense that Jesse didn't have to, you know, Jesse being himself didn't have to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, He's happy that there's no more blood on his hand. It's kind of all on Walters at this point, but um, yeah, I mean, he he does, he does bring that up during their conversation, but yeah, I I think, I think Jesse's a little, a little ashamed, like you said, just like, okay, like I, I was full on ready to kill him if he was, you know, gonna, if he was here to cause, cause me harm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So Walt then drives home. And he, Skylar's doing the dishes. He turns off the water and kind of whispers in his ear, in her ear, I'm out. And he's very happy about this because we see the next scene, Hank and Marie are over for dinner. It looks like the kids might have moved back or at least they're there. And it looks, you know, uh, Junior's pushing, uh, pushing Holly in her little, little carriage. They're having a good conversation. And it's kind of like a family again. Even Walter and Skylar share this little moment where they both smile at each other, kind of like, this is what it was like. You know, we're back to our old ways. But Hank, you know, has a little cramp. He goes to the bathroom and he's looking for some reading material. So he goes and he finds a, a Walt Whitman book. And if you remember, our pal Gail Bedecker uh, was a big fan of Walt Whitman. Well, he opens up the front of the book and my mother loves to do this. She writes in when she read the book, kind of that thing, uh, you know, the kind of the year, but this one's different. It says to my other, to my other favorite WW, it's been a pleasure working with you, GB. And you hear Hank just start to talk in his head, talking to Walter about Gail Bedecker and he talking about WW and he goes, Walter White and even Walt said in that past scene, you got me. And it's a startling lead that Hank did not want to uncover. Yeah. I'm, I'm the whole time I'm rewatching this. I'm like, why the hell does he have that there? Yes. Yes. Like 
if you were to have that book anywhere, you should probably keep it in secret, let alone on your, you know, on your shitter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a great way to basically come to a halfway point of the season because it's like, oh, like the episode leads you up to think, okay, well, things are finally, you know, things are going to return to normal. Things have died down. There's no more threats. You know, Jesse's paid off. Walter's got his cash. Big happy family. Big happy family. And I was even watching this partway through. Kennedy walked in. She's like, what what is all this mindless gibbering going on? And, you know, referring to the the conversations they were just having at the dinner table. And I'm like, oh, me knowing what happened. I'm like, well, there's there's a reason because, you know, Vince Gillian's probably thinking, well, he wants to make things like this is, you know, how it's going to end. Just kind of write it out as just Mm -hmm. everything's back to normal. Right. And just, just like that with, you know, one look of a book. Do you think that Gail, do you think he knows what it is right away? Do you think yes. he knows, okay, WW, Walter White, GB's Gail Bedecker? I do. Yeah. yeah. Because there's no other reason he'd have it, you know? Right. And he, he, he knows his handwriting. He's been staring at it for the longest time. And, and Wal- Walter was the, also the one, if you can remember from that conversation. I figured out it was Walt Whitman. Yeah. He's like, oh, well this, you know, this thing in, this thing in Gail's notes that's this means it's Walt Whitman and that kind of leads Hanks astray but obviously you know why else you know why else would Walter have a white Whitman book yeah I really thought this is creative as well uh from the writers I, I do think it suits Walter to be that arrogant and cavalier that he think he can just leave it out and like you know Skylar might read it or somebody and be like what the hell but yeah interesting like I said halfway point and we know how Hank, he, when he gets a lead, he sniffs the whole thing out. So we have a lot to uncover yeah. over the back half of the season when it comes to Hank versus Walter on their chase to, to see who will come out on top. But yeah, great episodes tonight. We lose Mike, uh, but we tie up some loose ends. We still have some interesting things down the stretch here. Walter is out of the business, but we'll, we know that doesn't last for long. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. But um, it's only Tuesday, but again, it's already Tuesday, Shay. So any other, uh, anything on the go this week for, for yourself? No, you know, I, I finally get to shave the muzzy tomorrow, which I'm kind of <laughs> looking forward to. Um, but uh, on top of that, um, you know, I, as a fellow accountant, uh, all my all my friends and, of course, my girlfriend find out about their marks later this week. So I'm listening, you know, give them a, a little good luck. They find out on Friday morning, which... I'm not even writing and I'm nervous for them. Um, but yeah, so other than that, I'm, you know, kind of, um, you know, self, um, setting up some celebratory things going on for them. So looking forward to that. It's a, it's a time to, for happy once you get those letters. It's a big deal for anyone who's in accounting, anyone trying to get those, uh, get their designation. So ha- happy about that. But uh, other than that, just keep watching my Leafs win and keep watching my Celtics lose. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, well, good luck to Kennedy uh, and uh, everybody else in the accounting world because, yeah, it's a big deal for sure. So good, good luck you? to all of you. Go? Um, yeah, it's probably, you know, sports. Uh, last weekend before the bowl games and uh, the uh, semifinal of college football this Saturday, which is sad, uh, <laughs> but I uh, will watch a lot of it so I don't, you know, so I get my full – uh great last weekend was just incredible uh, of college football just the craziness that went down so uh it partake in that also i wanted to tell you about a couple of things i think you might be interested in watching this evening because i know you're okay. the idol so yep. these are a little bit later starts but i would honestly recommend a, a pvr dvr whatever you got up there in an sj Suns warriors tonight it's 11 o'clock start but the two best teams in basketball go head to head combine five losses and it's december tomorrow so that's pretty damn good who do you um, got give me a give me a prediction you're not i'll, gonna I'll do take i'll take uh, suns are at home i'll take the suns tonight 17 okay. in a row tie a franchise record that's impressive um and then also duke ohio state college bass i friday okay. night uh, after we hung out there i went home i taped duke gonzaga it oh, might have been awesome. the best sporting event I watched all weekend, and I watched yeah. a lot of good ones. It was phenomenal. Uh, 
both teams are great. Duke is looks like a team that could really potentially win a national championship on Mike Krzyzewski's last year, but college basketball is fun. I know it's early, but I, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and there's some really good players to watch. So those are two things I wanted to float by okay. for tonight. What's the start time for that one, for that bad boy? 10.30. 10, oh. It's a little early. You can yeah. catch a quarter, maybe. Yeah. Uh, if, if it's on TV, I'd watch it for it sure. It is. I, uh, TSN, too. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, that, it's actually a doubleheader of college basketball. You got Florida State, Purdue, and then uh, Duke, Ohio State this evening. Oh, not too bad. So th- is the season just starting, or has it been in full effect? Yeah. For a while? It, it, most teams have played like four to six games. So oh, okay. uh, Duke's undefeated uh, so far. Gonzaga has lost one game to Duke. So, but uh, yeah, it was uh, the game was actually in Vegas. Great, great atmosphere for the game. So why why would it be why would it be they, they start they start the year they do these like little mini tournaments and they go play like at uh, oh. kind of neutral locations. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that that's kind of what they do to start the year, and then they start playing kind of their conference schedule next couple of weeks or shortly after Christmas. So oh, nice. Yeah, so the, yeah, looking forward to watching that tonight. And uh, I don't know if you saw Jack Hughes just signed a big extension with New Jersey. What's he getting? Uh, he oh, signed I'll, a, I'll say yeah or nay. Uh, eight year deal, uh, eight million per. Oh, that's a yay. Yeah, I like that. It's a good deal. I'm, wor- I'm worried about his injuries because mm-hmm. he, he seems to be a smaller guy who kind of mm-hmm. ends up getting. Uh, you know, whatever slew footed or, or something bad always seems to happen to him. But if he's healthy, he's a, uh, he's a factor. So. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good contract too. I, I agree with you. I worry about the injuries, but I think he's only getting better year after year over year. And, you know, he's playing with the slew footer of the NHL. So that's always a pro. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, that's always, your squad. It's always a positive to know, unless he, he really does something bad in practice, he should be okay from PK slew foot. Uh, uh, but um, yeah. Uh, awesome podcast as always happy one year buddy and uh, enjoy the rest of the week and we'll do this again next tuesday yes another year to come i'll be wearing the same greasy suit with the same greasy mustache oh all right i I love it well uh everybody thanks for tuning in i appreciate the support as always stay healthy stay safe and we'll talk soon